General Douglas MacArthur directing operations, Australians under his command push up the northern New Guinea coast toward Madang, major Japanese base across from New Britain. Picturesque native tribesmen are of invaluable aid to the Allies. They hold no love for the Japanese invader. Pushing the Japs into the sea, the Australians are crossing mountains and rivers the enemy thought impassable. Allied dive bombers pulverizing Jap positions. Cautiously, the Aussies search for lurking snipers, ferret the enemy from his foxholes with hand grenades. Mail call. There's nothing like a letter from home to cheer a soldier at the front. These Aussies look pleased. They've not only captured the Jap base, they're looking for the rest of the uniform that goes with it. Navy lighter than airships at an eastern United States base are playing an important role in speeding Allied convoys across the Atlantic in winning the war against the submarine. Bombs rolled out and loaded aboard, the pilot gets clearance from the control tower and noses his craft out to sea. Rendezvous off the coast. Working in perfect coordination with convoy commander, escort vessels and land-based planes, the airship takes up its vigil. Death to any lurking submarine. Action in the Atlantic. The presence of an enemy raider is suspected. The commander orders, bombs away. announced the lowest number of merchant ship losses since America entered the war. The convoys are going through. The rarely filmed royal family of Iran, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi and Her Royal Highness Fauzia, sister of Egypt's King Farouk. This is their three-year-old daughter. The three great powers, Russia, Britain, and the United States, have assured the independence of their kingdom. <music> Newest Allied aerial development, B-25 bombers equipped with 75 millimeter cannons. The 75 millimeter field piece, famous in the First World War, is today mounted on modern tanks. Now, United States warplanes have been built to absorb the terrific recoil of such a gun. And 75 millimeter cannon firing from the sky can and have sunk a destroyer. At another proving ground, parachute bombs developed for low level bombing blast the target. The parachute delays the bomb's descent, enabling the plane to escape the blast. United States officers now observe the effect of rapid artillery fire, the kind of mass barrage that bewilders the enemy. United States irrigation engineers, making their regular inspection tour of a viaduct in the far west, take a cameraman along for the ride. Frequently, they meet the most unexpected wild animals trapped within the walls of the viaduct. There's one now, a porcupine, wondering just where he is and what juggernaut is swooping down upon him. Dangerous when cornered, the porcupine seems to know that he's being helped. The engineers continue their ride, and a few miles further, sight a beautiful four-pronged buck.
Frantically, the poor fellow tries to escape over the slippery sidewall. But Uncle Sam's forestry men are accustomed to this sort of thing, and another denizen of the forest is helped on his way. Warplanes of the 8th United States Air Force winging toward Germany. Fast, powerful Thunderbolt fighters provide an escort. Supply trains are riddled. From cameras in the wings, synchronized with the guns, a thrilling record of the air battle is brought back. fighters blasted in midair. Mr. Churchill pause in the shadow of the Sphinx as they return from the now historic conferences with Premier Stalin at Tehran. For three days, significant talks with Turkey's President Ismedi Nonu held the diplomatic stage. Then Franklin Roosevelt, as Commander-in-Chief of America's Armed Forces, journeyed to Sicily. Riding in a jeep, he reviewed the United States 7th Army. With him is General Eisenhower, supreme allied commander in this theater of war. Singled for decorations are General Mark Clark, commander of the 5th Army, and five of his officers. Tribute to the men who routed the Nazis at Naples and Salerno. Distinguished Service Cross for extraordinary heroism in action. In parade order, United States troops march past. The President enjoys a picnic lunch with General Eisenhower, and then reunion with two of his sons, now fighting for the United Nations. 